slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time. So let's get to it. I've got ace king, raise to 15, and get called by the button and big blind. After this flop and a check, I bet 25, and they both call. And after this turn and a check, I bet 75, and inquiring buttons want to know. Gonna make the block. In response, I lift up my left hand like this, which is PVSL for it will if you raise to 230. Three. I'm all in. Once. I guess you f***ing did. I let you, get there. you did let me get there. Maybe next time when you flop two pair, make your move then, on the flop. By the turn, that ship has sailed. I've got Mean Joe Green, UTG limps, small blind calls, and I check my option. And I think I've seen this after the flop checks around, and after this turn, small blind leads for 10. I don't love chasing a meh flush, but fine, I call, as does UTG. And after I river said meh flush, small blind bets 10 again. And okay, fine, I call. But then UTG raises to 30. Boo! I hate this. You limped. I didn't voluntarily show up with this trash hand. And yes, 7-5 is a trash hand, according to Slow Poker Canon. Hi, I'm Slow Poker, and you too can make 100 real US dollars in 60 seconds using my tried and true method. Just raise from the small blind with two of these, and then check down all streets. Then just sit back and watch as you beat trash hands like this, this, and all of these. I didn't want to chase a bad flush, and my meh flush only beats three even more meh flushes. This bugs me far too much, but the price is far too good. I call it. You got a better one? I had a straight. I flopped it. That's what I get for being cute. Yeah. That is what you get for being cute. Every time I ever try to trap anybody, I gonna call you anyway. Yeah, you do get f***ed. Did you not hear what I just told Ace 5? Once the board starts to moisten, you gotta load up that pot for value and protection. You're waiting till the river? When someone could have easily hit a flush? That's when you raise? Why are you waiting till the board is that wet? Too late, too late. I've got 1988's Most Wonderful Son and Dad. And these flops ain't great for a double board PLO bomb pot. On the second floor, I've just got a gut shot draw. And in the lobby, I've only got top pair good kicker second nut back door flush draw. So yeah, not much to write home about. Huh? But once Hijack bets 20 and Cutoff just calls, I can't fold at Crazy Eddie prices. Crazy Eddie, his prices are insane. So I call, as does Big Blind. And that's a good turn. Ditto. After two checks, Cutoff suddenly wakes up and pots it. And while normally there'd be concern about getting quartered, it's unlikely I'm beat on both boards, given I've got eyes on half the Jacks and half the Kevins. So I think to myself, what would my father do? I then realized that there's more to life than grades and football and Winnie Cooper. Sometimes, life is just about your dad and PLO bomb pots. And you know what? If my old man turned Broadway and two pair, he would pot it. And I love my dad. Pocket. What? Cut off. You had pocket aces, flopped top set, and slow played? This is a bomb pot. Pretty much the whole deck's been dealt. There are so many draws. Plus, you were sitting right there when I was card splaining to ace five and six four offsuit. We've been through this. On the flops, you had me in the crosshairs and didn't pull the trigger. But by the turns, I've got the gun. <laughs> You should have killed me. I've got the little man, raised to 15, and get called by the hijack and big blind. And this flop is Seuss approved. Big blind checks, I bet 25. And while big blind's calling chip is preloaded, hovering above the pot like a tiny drone, hijack reluctant calls. I call that. Okay. And after this turn, Big Blind checks and makes a promise. Anybody bet I'm on. I bet 75. Hijack quickly calls. And let's go, Big Blind. Big Blind, you promised. <laughs> Not cool, Big Blind. Anybody bets. I'm all in. Liar. And after this river, I bet around 200 and Hijack snap calls. And Hijack shows his hand, which is, that's right, you guessed it, pocket, ki pocket kings. Ha!
Hi, Jack. You flatted preflop with kings? Then you flopped top set and just called? What did you do here? Yeah, what did you think I had? Because I didn't think you had kings. How many times do I have to tell you people to not slow play? Are my words not enough? What's it going to take? Do I really have to break into song? Do I? All right. Now, usually I don't do this, but uh, go ahead and break them off with a little previews of the remix. While you got the nuts, raise it. Pocket kings, raise it. Because it's all on you. Slow poker is the tightest player I've ever seen on a poker stream. Technically not a question, but yes, this was my first ever live stream and I did not play many yet. Okay, yes, you've made your point. The thing is... Wait, but this was my first ever live stream, so that's patently inaccurate. Okay, well, you seem to have a lot of free time and closely watch my every move in a way that's borderline creepy, but... Ah, yes, you replaced slow with knit. That's, that's very funny. But yes, I folded a lot. And sometimes a low batting average does mean you're a garbage hitter. But other times it simply means most pitches are in the dirt. And that night nearly all the pitches were just miles outside the strike zone. Still, in those rare moments I was dealt a playable hand, I played them pretty well. Like when I raised with ace-deuce from early position and bluffed a better ace off the turn. Or when I raised over two double straddle flatters with ace-king and got pre-flop value and post-flop value from pocket poop emojis. So yeah, I made hay while there were haymaking tools. Like a thresher? How do you make hay? But enough excuses. Play good cards? You're a loser. Play all the cards? You're the opposite of a loser. No exceptions. This may be a stalker level obsession. Scrooge played poker? You might consider a hobby and a psyche vow and someone to love. Uh, no, someone else. I'm very married and have standards. You know, my range ain't just tight in poker, pal. I've got queen 10 of spades and raised to 20 over a limper and he calls. On this flop, limp caller leads out for 30. This move is called a donk. I don't like donks, especially from limp callers. It feels like an affront to everything poker stands for. Makes my skin crawl. It's disrespectful. It's wrong. Like, I don't know, live tweeting a funeral or a famous white poker player doing this. Me have me ganja, me have me woman, me have me. Okay, fine, donking isn't that bad. But still, I don't like it. Because this is my hand. I'm the preflop aggressor. I took the betting lead. I have all the ace kings and pocket aces and pocket nines. And when someone dunks on me, I handle it in different ways. Sometimes I'll raise, but sometimes it's just simpler to call and turn the nuts and watch him dunk again. And then raise and watch him tank fold and crawl over to me and sob and genuflect and swear up and down he'll never cross me again. Tell me, Dunker, did you learn your lesson? Did you? Yeah, man. Hijack raises to 15, and Button raises to 50, and I've got pocket kings, so I raise it. Hijack folds, and Button calls. On this flop, I opt for a check. The red chip poker people say that instead of a jam, a check here is fine, as it often induces mistakes by the villain. Still, after Button goes all in, I start to wonder whether I've induced a mistake, or if I'm the one about to make one. Because unlikely he shoves with jacks, and he might have queens, but I've got a hunch it's something else. And hunch notwithstanding, I say to myself, well, if he has what I think he has, these two hands usually go all in preflop, so might as well just do it here, on a tape delay. That doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't, but maybe I'm sick of being world famous as that guy who makes epic folds with kings. I folded kings! Maybe it's time I turn over a new leaf. Maybe today is the day. I call with kings! Even though I kind of know the score this time too. I call, you trapping me? Well, at least my read was right, and that's something to write home about. But you lost. I've got aces. Raised to 15. Hijack raises to 60. And I misjudge the height of his stack. So instead of a standard size 4 bet, I just take a shortcut down by shove turnpike. I'm on it. After hijack folds, and I'm about to fold and tip and drag, it's brought to my attention that Button still has unfolded cards. Yep. I didn't notice that she had cold called hijack's 3 bet. And now, she snaps it off. I think he got caught with his hand in the kitchen, right? I think you're right. Turns out Button's got kings, and Big Blind, the same guy who just had aces versus my kings, decides he's not quite done playing the villain role. Can I call a king on the flop? 
Ha ha ha. Very funny, big blind. You're adorable. I call Keen one time. I'm sorry, excuse me? Shut the front door flush draw. That is not cool. If you're just gonna root for a king in the window, fine. But you're deploying your one time? How dare you? That is reprehensible. Yeah, man. So hear my prayer, poker gods, and duly smite this heathen's iniquitous use of his onest of times. I thank you. Thy will be done. And now, the new miniseries, Don't Chase Promos! I've got five deuce of clubs. And why haven't I folded yet? Because this poker room is called 52 Social, and they've got a promotion where if you hit a straight flush with five deuce of clubs, you win a big bag of cash. And it folds to me in the cutoff. Okay, so we're doing this. I raise to 15 and get called by the button and small blind. And good thing I had Lucky Charms for breakfast, because guess who flopped the mother middle pair. Small blind checks. I bet 20 and button calls. On this turn, he probably has a king, so I slow down. And on this river, yeah, whatever, take it. I'm already drenched with shame. Hey, oh, I was ahead the whole time? And button was chasing a gut shot draw? Oh, then well, he's the shameful one. Still, while I did get away with it this time, let this be a lesson. Don't chase promos! I've got five deuce of clubs, and Shorty raises, despite her stack being far too low for this five deuce of coaster. But worry not, Shorty, because I'm in a small blind where there's only one thing to do with a marginal hand, and that's... Oh. And then, somebody just smashed this flop. Shorty fires 30, and I check raise, and she calls. Sure, I got lucky again, but this approach to poker is not sustainable, so I repeat. Don't chase promos! I've got five deuce of clubs, and after a raise and a small blind call, fine twist my arm, I call. This flop checks around, and this turn is an awesome turn. Not just because I get a little value here, but because it's about to go down. After the dealer deals the dream river, someone will wheelbarrow over a burlap sack of gold coins emblazoned with a giant dollar sign. Dealer, let's do this. Oh, and unlike that asshole from before who tried to redeem his one time for evil, I'm using mine for good. Ace or six of clubs, one. One f***ing time. One time. One time. Dealer just pick up that 10, light it on fire, reach back into the deck for a mulligan card, and one time. It was not your time. Yeah, okay. He checks, I bet he folds. But in conclusion... Chase promos! I've got Ace King, but first... Time out. This one needs a scouting report. To my left is Tad. <laughs> I call him Tad because he's been playing for a tad too many hours. Or honestly, could be days. He's knocked back a tad too many, let's say, Mr. Pibbs, and he's a tad wild. I scold me! Tad has been a wrecking ball, demolishing stacks left and right. Not due to skill, mind you. He'll raise call with some weird hand, flop a weird straight, and stack pocket kings. Or he'll cold call a four bet with any two cards, flop a terrible draw, rip it, and hit it. That is Tad. Time in. So when I raise to 15, and Tad min raises to 30, and button cold calls, I will be forebetting a bit larger than usual. 200. Because if Tad here wants to see a flop, he's got to pay the piper. That's a good bet. Damn good bet. 200, huh? 400. Well, especially against a player like Tad, I'll never just call. And there's only one six bet size I'm choosing. And spoiler alert, it's not some in. Come on in. Damn. All these chips would basically go to nothing, I think. He has me, he has me covered by a lot. Echo. And here we go. The flop is no help. Not even one measly diamond. Come on, turn. Mm. River, it's up to you. And I already used my one time. So this one's gotta be au natural. Ace or king, ace or king, ace or king. <sighs> I despondently show my hand. But Tad doesn't show his. Is it because he's impaired from a tad too many pibs? Or is he a Nick Rigby acolyte, slow rolling the diaper? Just put me out of my misery, Tad. Yeah, Jax was in the slow roll. You got me. What? Did I just win a six bet pot with ace high with over 4,000 in the middle and the blinds are $3 and $1? I think I did. And while that may seem wild, what's wilder was that I was this close to losing it all. And why? Tell him, Button. I folded ace 10. Ace 10, bro. I would have had the ball. Ooh, I would have gone home with all that money. I had a kid. I, I can't believe yeah, I folded it. 
you heard Button right. Somehow, and I still don't quite believe him, he had Ace-10 offsuit, cold called a 3-bet, and then, for some incomprehensible reason, folded to just a measly 5-bet. Not anymore, I'm not. Second biggest. Or stop the presses. Maybe third biggest. Cause wait for it. I might have had a three. Holy sh**. A three? That means that as a result of my own special blend of poker voodoo witchcraft, I tricked, let's say 9-3 offsuit, into folding quads. I'm a legend! No, you're not. I am. Now, as for ice cold beer here, look, a tad's gotta do what a tad's gotta do. Right, Tad? You gotta risk it for the biscuit every now and then, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Truer words were never spoken about the correlation of risk management and baked goods. And Tad, all thanks to your calling my six bet all in with Ace Deuce, I'm off to Walmart with your money to buy exactly 17,906 biscuits. Bless us, O oh Tad, for thy gifts that we are about to receive. And that'll do it for episode 23 of Slow Poker. Please like, subscribe, comment, and watch my shorts. They're like these, but short. And finally, don't judge a book by its cover. Hun, Ebenezer Scrooge won a bracelet and deuced a seven single draw. How did I just learn this? Until next time, this has been Slow Poker. Don't risk FOMO! Hey Dad, can we have cereal today? No. Eat your biscuits.